Are you ready for Chapter 11 of Nim's Island by Kathy Orr? I'm reading today with permission from Random House Children's Books. Do you remember what Nim was doing at the end of Chapter 10? She's all alone on her island, except for her animal friends. And I remember she hurt her knee. It was giving her a lot of trouble, hurt a lot. She was only talking to one person. She was using email to talk to them. Um, kind of like how we correspond now with our computers. We get to talk to each other with our computers. She was talking to her friend Alex Rover, the writer, the adventure writer who wrote great stories. Alex sounds like a boy's name, but do you remember? Alex was really named Alexandra. They called her Alex for short, and she was really a girl. Okay? Chapter 11. It's a nightmare, Alex groaned, keying in travel agents in the internet search engine. She's alone on the island, and nobody knows it except me, me, who's been afraid of airplanes and oceans since my uncle whirled me through the air and into a swimming pool. That must have been when Alex was small. I like being in my flat. That's her house. She moaned, clicking Pacific Charter flights. With my books, my computer, my imaginary friends, people live in my head and go away when I put their story away. Places that fit onto maps and pictures, animals that don't smell or eat or leave hair on the carpet. But there's only one thing to do, she said, clicking into her email. Dear Nim, all my heroes are just pretend. Real people aren't usually as brave or as strong or smart or lucky as the heroes in my stories. Maybe that's why it's fun to make them up in my head and read about them. Because I'm not tall, dark, and handsome, I'm certainly not brave, and I'm not a man. But even if I'm not a hero and you don't need rescuing, I'd still love to come to see you and the island. And of course, Fred, Selkie, and Chica. What kind of dog is that? I'm guessing that she's a St. Bernard. If she weighs more than your father and Fred's little, uh, a poodle? Love, Alex. She thinks those animals are dogs. P.S. My phone number is 155-897-346. What's yours? The letter waited all the next day till Nim checked her email again. She stared at the ocean and read the letter out loud. The words stayed the same. She turned the computer off, ripped out the plug, but the words danced in her head. Alex Rover was not a hero. Alex Rover was a woman, and she wasn't even brave. Outside, the evening was peaceful and still. But inside, Nim was a rage hotter than Fire Mountain's lava and wilder than a whirlpool in a storm. She felt angry and tricked. Lost and lonely, sad and confused, and the feelings were stronger than the words could say. Her shout rang across the water. Birds settling for the night flapped into the sky, and the king roared an answer from Sea Lion Point. Selkie barked wordly. Law looked across the sand, and Fred peered from under his rock. Nim was afraid if she used the laptop, she'd hit the keys right through the keyboard. She grabbed a piece of paper and a pencil and marched back inside. She sounds really mad to find out that Alex Rover isn't the person she thought. To Alex Rover, it was mean to trick me, even if you didn't mean to, because whenever I was really lonely or scared or bored, I thought about what you could do, and then I could do it, too, which was silly if you're not a hero, and I wish I'd never done it, and I especially wish that I'd never, ever wished that you were my father instead of Jack. Goodbye forever. From Nim. Scribbling in the dark, she found sticks and branches for a fire, and it was blazing. She threw the letter on top so that the smoke would carry it far, far away to wherever Alex Rover lived, and she would smell it and know just how angry Nim was. Selkie and Fred crept up beside her. Alex Rover lied to me, Nim told them, and she threw another stick onto the fire. Selkie barked low in her chest. Well, Tom exactly lied, Nim muttered, and rubbed tears on Selkie's warm fur. But she's not a hero. I thought I knew who Alex Rover was. He was my friend, and now he's gone. Selkie grunted comfortingly. You won't change into something else, will you? Nim asked. Not sure whether she was joking or not. I won't wake up tomorrow and find out you're a mermaid. Selkie grunted again a little louder. Alex thinks you're a St. Bernard, and she thinks Fred is a poodle. She must be crazy. Suddenly, she began to giggle. She thought you were dogs. And I thought she was a hero. The giggle became a laugh. The laugh became a bellow, and she was rolling over and over on the sand, hiccuping and laughing or crying. She didn't know which. Until Fred sneezed and Selkie barked to make her stop. She knew there was another reason she'd sent the letter in a way that Alex wouldn't be able to read it. So when the sun came up the next morning, she turned on the laptop. Dear Alex Rover, maybe you didn't try to trick me. I wanted to know someone brave, because I'm not. I think maybe I accidentally tricked you, too. Selkie and Fred aren't dogs. 
but you will like them. When are you coming? From Nim. Dear Nim, now. Love, Alex. For two nights and two days, Alex had been planning, sorting, packing. Her time had switched to island time. She slept when it was night there, got up in the dark to turn on her computer at the island's dawn. She refused to think about what she'd do if Nim said no, because she didn't quite believe that Nim had stopped being lonely. She didn't quite know if Jack would really be home soon, because nothing in her life had ever been this important. She packed a first aid kit, her laptop, her cell phone, two notebooks, two pens, two books, the Swiss Family Robinson and Robinson Crusoe, a toothbrush, a hairbrush, soap, two t-shirts, two pairs of shorts, a pair of jeans, one sweater, three sets of underwear, socks, and the map with the island marked with a dot. Then she picked up her suitcase and locked the door behind her. There she goes. She's packed and ready to go. And that's the end of chapter 11. See you next time for another chapter of Nim's Island.